This time I loaded up the mold with another batch of resin you know, after it was powdered and assembled and this time when I assembled it I did uh, something a little bit differently. I not only used the mold straps uh, from side to side but as you can see I also used one front to back. Uh, I then clayed in around the edge and then put the entire rig on the machine, strapped it to the surface before any resin was poured. I then poured the resin from the funnel down into the hole opening of the, of the horn, like I did the first time. Uh, plugged it with, uh, with the soft warm clay immediately. This time I used three ounces of A, three ounces of B, so this is a six ounce pour. This will be a hollow cast. The repair to the mold was made and it, it took, it stayed overnight. It, um, and it was secure this morning. But uh, here we are on the 2x2 two two Manitron rotational casting machine. I'm going to make a quick check to make sure we have no leakage anywhere. Looks good here. No leakage from the horns. The mold is beginning to warm a little. The clay is beginning, well the clay is still warm, but it might be being further warm by the um, by the um, the setting resin. We'll push the start. You see where the speeds are located. Push the start. It's been going for about uh, 10 minutes, I would say. And I have no leakage, and that's a good sign. I have the cup here. You can see the resin is still kind of in a liquid zone. It's out of focus, and I'm sorry for that. But the resin is just about starting to gel at this point. So that's good. I do not think there will be any leakage. So I'm going to leave it on this for about 45 minutes to an hour. And when I come back, I will demold this third casting. And this will be a hollow casting, so it will get everywhere. I considered making another solid casting. The problem with that was not being able to turn the mold over to coat the top of the crown of the skull um, and the top of the nasal bones caused a couple of minor air pockets in the second casting. Now that wasn't so much a problem, they were repaired, they were filled in, um, but I thought, you know what, just for the heck of it, let me go ahead, fill it with six ounces of resin, and do a rotational casting. The mold is holding together beautifully, um, I'm just going to let it go, I'm just going to let it run. Wish me luck, folks. Bye. Okay. Well, it's been about an hour and a half. It's a lot longer than I usually <laughs> leave things on the uh, on the old Manitron rotational casting machine. But let's open this puppy uppy. And I do notice some licage. That's how you say it in French, licage. Uh, <laughs> uh, there was some under one of the belts that was not covered with. Um, where the seam was not covered in clay. Um, doesn't seem to be a big deal. I just hate that there was any licage at all. So let's get this here. Let's open this up. And see what's what. Oh, here we go. Here. Sticking right here. Might be a good idea to sort of spray these with a release agent before I put them on this. But again, th again, this was just another experiment, that's all. It's an experiment gone mad, mad. No. Uh, <laughs> well, the clay stayed in the horns really well. Stayed in the horn openings rather well. Very nice, in fact. In fact, we have a little piece of clay left down in there. Okay. Uh, let's open this up. Oh, we got leakage around the front. Yeah. Okay, well, <clears throat> of course, this happened because it was rotating. 
you know, center of gravity kept changing and whatnot. So, you know, it's got to have something to do with it. As far as any of the, um, the resin that you see here on the, on the straps, simple matter of just taking a tool and pulling it away like so. But yeah, normally I, I would have sprayed these. This time I did not. Why? Because I was so darn cocky confident in myself and what I was about to do that it would not leak. Well, I just forgot myself. <laughs> you got to love this stuff. I love it when it works out the way we want. And I, you got you to gotta laugh when it doesn't. Well, I mean, it did work out. It's just, you know, it wants to be a little difficult, really. Rather. But here we go. Removing the clay from around the edges. Around the edges. Prune the hedges. Anybody who's a fan of the Three Amigos will immediately recognize that line. Gringos falling from the skies? Yes, El Guapo. One of my favorite, favorite movies. All right, let's get a little modeling tool action going on here and get under the clay and remove it. Now let's try and get this puppy open. With the leakage, let's see, there's leakage at the front. Now what I did do, I did apply some Vaseline <laughs> around the edge of the mold, as well as the edge of the silicone itself, the silicone mold itself. And why did I do that? Well, I wanted to make sure that the little locking points would lock right away without, without any problems. So I went and put separator there. And you can see at the front here where it leaked out. This should have separator here. Yeah, see it's coming right away from the, right away from the plaster. That's good. I need to continue opening this. Let's try the butter knife. The old rugged butter knife. There we go, that gets in there. It's, it's a nice thin blade. So yeah, it gets right in there. It's like cracking open a dinosaur egg. There we go. Sometimes you just got to wedge it apart a little bit to get to the prize inside. It wouldn't be any fun if it was easy as a box of Cracker Jacks to get that prize inside. Ah. And what I said in the beginning would eventually happen. Yeah, yeah, it did. It did, but that's okay. I have woodworker's epoxy that will glue that in place really, really, really well. I'll try the tech bond on it first. I'll just pick some of this resin from off the plaster mold. So right now the top's being held. It's I had resin leached out pretty much everywhere. And we'll get this out of the mold. There we go. And there we are. All right. Let's take the plaster support jacket off of here. Put it under the work table for now. Don't want it rolling off, falling out anywhere. And we've got just a little bit of leakage out the sides, but not a whole heck of a lot. I'm going to go around with my thumb and get this bad boy out of here. Now, 
Now remember, this is going to be a hollow casting, so if any of it breaks away during the demolding, well, you know, too bad. I already got one good solid casting. This was just another in a long line of experiments. You gotta love to experiment when you make molds. Especially when the molds are inexpensive like this. They're getting the thumb right in between and just separating all this. Now there's lots of Vaseline in here. Almost too much. Yuck. <laughs> Almost too much. It's like a too much, a too much. Pull it away from the resin now. Here we go. Need to start pulling it away from the resin. I'm going to try not to break this because this is. I don't know how many pulls you can get out of one of these molds. This is the third pull. So. Oh my gosh, this is great. I've got a lot of detail. Oh my goodness. Remember those little bones that were not present in the former casting that I had to build up with, with, um, I had to use, uh, the CA glue and, and, uh, baking soda to, to replace. Well, these completely filled. See, rotational casting will get the, the resin everywhere, absolutely everywhere because it constantly, it constantly rotates it. So it's going in and out and in and out of all the sections of the mold. The Italians, we talk with our hands. You dig it? This looks, this is complete right in here. These little bones are complete. The, uh, the seepage is minimal. Easy, easy, don't break the little bones off. I mean, this is thin. The flashing is so very, very thin here. I want to see how the repair to the mold held up. It's probably going to tear loose again. It's probably going to tear loose again. And that's okay because with this silicone right here, you can make the repairs you need to make. All right? It is a good adhesive. It's a sealant and an adhesive. And I think I can say that the, the flashing at the rear of the skull is thinner on this one than it was on the solid pour. I dare say. I dare, I dare. Dare, dare. That's coming right out. Whoops. Got Vaseline over everything. Vaseline on everything. That's coming apart. That's the part that was torn last time. That's the part, or was it this side? Oh, heck, I don't remember. We might just be putting new tears into the mold. So be it. I'll pull this out. Mm. <laughs> Tough to grab hold of. Lots of separator. Lots of Vaseline. Mm. Come on, baby. Come on, son, let go. Come on, let go of my ego. All right. I'm gonna have to get a little alcohol action going on here. Last call for alcohol. Gotta clean this off. This needs to, this must be wiped down. It must, it must. Just regular 70% isopropyl alcohol from our local Kroger pharmacy. There we are. You've got to be able to get a grip. You've got to be able to get a good grip on this silicone. And the Vaseline just does not allow you to do that. Now I'll wipe the excess off my hands. Try this again. Sometimes it would help to, you know what? I'm gonna use one of these cloths here to help get hold of this puppy. I get that down in there. Pull 
this piece out. Come on, baby. All right, desperate, desperate times, desperate times. We got my leather in. Grab this and pull. Come on, baby. Out you go. Come on. Hmm. Desperate times don't work. Yikes. Come on now. Oh. I need to ponder this one just a bit. And I'm going to get in here with the modeling tool. I'm going to get down in the socket between the resin and the silicone. Try and help loosen it up this way. Okay, I'm going to try it again. I'm going to use the cloth. Try this again. There's one. Saw that flip out on camera. Ouch, my finger. <laughs> I'll do the other side now. I get this to flip out on camera. There we go. Popped it right out. Yay! Happy, happy, joy, joy. I'll tell you something right now. I need to clip this edge of plastic. You see, that is real sharp. That is a sliced finger waiting to happen. So, I'm going to get my clippers. I'm going to take that right down to the skull casting itself. This needs to go. This flashing is real thin, real sharp, and real out there, baby. And I want it gone, gone, super gone. All right. There we go. Okay. Thank goodness for small tools, huh? Now we're going to roll this forward. We're going to roll this up and over the tip of the horns. All over the tip of the horn buds. There we go. Up, 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 up. Let's do it again. Come on, keep going. Come on, my brother. All right, there's one. There's two. All right. Out the socket. Out the second eye socket. It's good to roll it. That's how it worked on the other side. A little... Help my dry cloth here, please. Thank you. A little more help. Thank you. Come on, my friend. Get the heckle and jekyll out. Now, remember, this eye socket has got the little deep crevasse. It's got a little deep hole from where the original skull eye socket had no seating. So... I need to loosen that up just a little bit, just a wee bit. See if I can't pull this out of here. Yes! And we're good. We're good. And the repair I made stayed. I believe, yeah, yeah, this was the side that was repaired. And it just ever so slightly came away. Right there. Okay, but. Huh, darn, man. This is a hollow casting. This is really nice. Nicely, nicely done. Now, everywhere that we had a weak spot in the solid castings are non-existent in this one. You recall the solid castings had air bubbles across the top here. The finish, the surface of them was rough. Remember I said I would have to uh, fill that over. You do not have to do that now. This right here it's a darn good casting. A darn good casting. Darn good casting. Take this down a little bit. And the 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 
the flashing is absolutely uniform. There are no thick spots, no thinner spots. It's absolutely uniform. And the only thing left in here that's odd and doesn't belong is a little bit of clay that was plugging the horn opening. This is the horn opening where the the uh, funnel was inserted as well. That was a deep one. Well, there we go. We have a rotational, rotationally cast skull. There are no air pockets here on the schnoz. This little ceramic cleanup tool. No air pockets here. Just minimal flashing to clean up. Everything else is good. Not only that, but the thin spots on the actual bone skull that I referred to earlier, these thin spots right here where you could see my finger through, see how small they are on this casting? All right, see? The, what you call, the, um, because it was tumbled, you know, in every which way, in every direction iman imaginable within the uh, mold, everything was covered. Everything was covered. This is absolutely fantastic. This is absolutely fantastic. This little ceramic cleanup tool is a nice, it has a sharp, sharp edge. All right, don't kid yourself. If you get cut with, with this, this would probably be worse than getting cut with an X Acto knife because it's not as sharp as an X Acto knife blade, but then again, green ceramic wear doesn't need real sharp knives, but this is sharp enough to cut is probably sharp enough to kill but um yeah this is this is just super thanks for asking this is just super this is fantastical this is fantastic this is a wonderful wonderful casting here this is beautiful and the nice thing is if i were to drill out the bottom of the, uh, the cranial cavity right here, the inside of the skull would be hollow. And that's what's cool. Proof? Why, I've got your proof right here. Do we have proof? Yeah, we have some light shining through here. Shine a light on me. See the back of the skull lighting up? All right. You don't get that with the solid casting. You do not get that with the solid casting. Here's the solid casting. You don't get that. You don't get that through the back of the skull. All right. I now have three little bonehead castings for this guy. We have the original little bonehead. The first casting of the bonehead, which is a solid casting, and the third casting. I can probably get another one. The mold is in really good shape. There's some minor, minor details to tend to. I would re-repair this right here, put a little more silicone and re-repair that. There's a couple little tears here. Simply repair this. The one here came apart. I would re-repair that. I can get one more, I can, I can get one more casting out of this. This really came out well. The big thing this time was I put silicone along here with each one of these little bumps and they locked beautifully into their sockets. And you can see it really had to be held down tight and I think we did that this time with the ceramic mold straps. I think this is really, really well done. It's really well made. I know I'm happy. I'm very, very happy. We had some weak spots here in the solid casting. Right here at the eye sockets, we had some weak spots, okay? Right here, you see that's almost straight up and down. Now that can, that can be altered, that can be corrected, but here, with the rotationally cast skull, the eye socket here is round as it is on the natural skull, on the actual skull. 
So yeah, I'm real pleased. Real pleased. I'm super, super stoked about this. I'm stoked. This is way cool. This is way cool. I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> no, 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 no. I haven't forgotten my little friend here. Not a, not a bit of it. But I do love it when a plan comes together. I now have a Clip Springer Triumvirate. The way I had a African Wildcat Triumvirate, I now have a Clip Springer Triumvirate. We are triumphant and happy. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs way up. Very nice, very nice, very nice.